Good morning, everyone. I sure have missed singing with you all, <clears throat> so I thought I'd record something that we could sing together. This is Holy, Holy Way by Ricky Byers. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Let me love, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Let me love, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me know that love is all around. Let me know, let me know that love is all around. Oh, let me know that love is all around. Let me know, let me know that love is all around. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me live in a holy, holy way. Let me live, let me live in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me live in a holy, holy way. Let me live, let me live in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me know that love can heal us all. Let me know, let me know that love can heal us all. Oh, let me know that love can heal us all. Let me know, let me know that love can heal us all. Oh, let me live in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me live in a holy, holy way. Let me love, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Let me love, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let my steps reveal a path of peace. Let my steps, let my steps reveal a path of peace. Oh, let my steps reveal a path of peace. Let my steps, let my steps reveal a path of peace. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Let me love, let me love in a holy, holy way. Thank you very much, Christopher Fritchie, and good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Edward Fulyun, and I'm pleased to welcome you to our service. If you are visiting with us for the first time, welcome. I invite you to go visit our newly redesigned website for more information about the spiritual support that is available to you and everyone, and also information about opportunities for staying connected to the community online during this shelter in place. Today at 1 p.m. we have something special, a virtual social hall planned. Uh, you can find the link for the virtual social hall on our website. I'll be there to greet you and we'll be able to see each other online and chat. We'll be able to meet old friends and make new ones. We'll have the opportunity to connect in small groups and feel the warmth of our community again. Today we have a special message from our treasurer, Bob Hart. Well, making one of these videos, you know, it's a little bit like talking to yourself. You're alone in a room somewhere and trying to figure out what to say and nobody's listening. <laughs> so welcome to my world. This is the world of the um, treasurer. And what an exciting couple of months this has been since we last met at the annual meeting. What a mountain of things have taken place. I think uh, I would, would like to let you know how appreciative we all are uh, for those of you who are able to continue giving uh, on a regular basis. And but also to let people know who aren't able, because you know we're all feeling the pinch of this, 
to know that um, take care of yourselves first. We've been doing all kinds of things to uh, make ends meet. You know, there's uh, the center's been closed since about the middle of March. The staff and the facilities folks have done a lot of work to make sure that the you know utilities are turned down and you know no, we're not using garbage because we, we don't have garbage so we discontinued that while we're all hoping that this is going to be over quickly we have to plan for uh, on a financial standpoint we have to plan for this lasting for a long time so we've done all kinds of things and it's been really kind of neat we've uh, applied for different programs one is uh, a program called the paycheck protection program and that's uh, offered through the cares act put in an application to get funds that would cover two months of employee costs. And we were granted that. So we, we have the funds in place and we're using them now to fund staffing for May and June. And if we spend that correctly, we can apply for it to be a forgiven loan. So well, we borrowed the money, we can uh, we use it right, then they'll uh, turn it into a grant. Then we also have applied for a an additional loan. We haven't gotten it yet, but we think we will. And that'll be used to help uh, cover costs on a long-term, more of a long-term basis. In addition to that, we have uh, applied for what's called the uh, mortgage relief program. And the bank gave us a 90-day reprieve on our mortgage payments. The giving has been really very strong. I mean, there's been a drop-off, but the, the amount of funds that are coming in from all of you folks has been heartwarming and uh, gives us all confidence that we, with a little bit of augmentation and maybe dip, dipping into some savings here and there, that um, that we'll get through this and make it for, uh, for a long time, for as long as we need to. So we come out of this on the other end even better. As a community, I mean, the people are just pulling together so wonderfully. And uh, so a big thank you to all of you who are able to continue uh, giving and um, our heartfelt appreciation for those who have to cut back a bit or can't give because of, uh, of the hardships this is causing. And we certainly understand that. We don't want anybody to feel bad about not being able to maintain at the same level as when things were uh, running so smoothly. So until next time, this is Bob Hart, your treasurer, signing off. Bye. Thank you, Bob, for all the work you are doing behind the scenes with our staff and trustees to ensure that our community is well through this time. At the Center for Spiritual Living, we are motivated by a vision of a healthy, loving world. It is called the Global Vision, and each week we read a portion of the vision to remind us of where we are going and what we are growing into. Please join me in reading this week's portion of the global vision. We see a world in which there is a renewed emphasis on beauty, nature, creativity, art, and aesthetics. It is time now to turn our attention within. After a beautiful trumpet prayer meditation by our friend, Reverend Kaya Abendrath, Practitioner Betty Smith will speak a spiritual mind treatment for us, which is our form of affirmative prayer, and then she will guide us in reading today's affirmation. Thank you again for being here. I know that somewhere between the music, the meditation and prayer is exactly what your heart is seeking for the next step of your spiritual journey. Now, if we were together, we would be settling into our chairs, becoming aware of our breathing, and abandoning all distractions to allow the next hour or so to soothe our souls. I invite you to do that with me now for this moment of musical and visual inspiration. Welcome.
there is only one, one infinite and divine power and presence of spirit that is everywhere all of the time, always available. For spirit is love and peace and joy and harmony and beauty and power. Spirit is this power for good that is always recreating and renewing itself every day. It is the source of all good. And I know that this power and presence of spirit is right here where I am. Within me, there is a wellspring of love and peace, of beauty and power the power for good that propels me forward. And I know this is true for each person listening to this prayer. Each one of us has that same wellspring of all of the attributes of spirit. Each one of us is a divine and unique expression of that one life of spirit that connects us all. Each one of us has within us all that we need all of the time. And so I just claim and declare for this celebration service that it is good. I claim that each person finds the many gifts that are provided and each person relishes in this time of remembering the truth that spirit is everywhere present and always available for each of us. And so with a heart full of gratitude, I release this word into the law and I can just let go and let it be. And so it is, amen. Good morning. I'm Betty Smith. I'm a licensed prayer practitioner at the center. Please read with me today's affirmation from our Beyond 2020 Spiritual Book of Affirmations. The world I live in is all that it appears to be, and it is so much more. I am open to an experience of life that is beyond my wildest dreams. And so it is. Take the road less traveled Take the path less worn Think for yourself and dance to the beat of your own
These days, almost more than ever before, I'm thinking about that statement that we are spiritual beings having an earthly experience. Today there are so many things spinning around, news cycles, pinging cell phones, and countless messages shouting at us, seemingly to bind us ever more securely to our earthly experience, and potentially to the detriment of our spiritual experience and aspirations. With that in mind, I find my daily news intake is a powerful place to practice and deepen my spiritual awareness, mainly because I'm reading about global and local events that seem to go contrary to my spiritual understanding. I realize I must be diligent and put into practice what I've learned. I must stay close to the truth while I take in what is happening around me. The recent shooting of a 25-year-old black man in the state of Georgia, Ahmad Arbery, by two white men got me to thinking about how do I understand racism through the filter of our science of mind teaching. If we are all one, and oneness is at the core of our teaching, how do we approach the stark duality of racism and address it in a spiritual framework? Racism is antagonism directed toward, against another person of a different race based on the belief that one's race is superior. It is based, by definition, on a belief in duality, in separateness. Now let us put that alongside what our science of mind teaches. That there is only one reality, oneness. There is a power, it teaches, that we may all use, and use it in any way we see fit, according to our needs. And this implies equality of all the exact opposite of duality. As many of you already know, the first step in affirmative prayer is to acknowledge that power. And the second step is the acknowledgement that we are one with this power. Not only us, not only the people we love, not only the people who look like us, but all people. For if one person could be admitted from this formula, the entire equation would be invalid. So it seems to me in this framework of all being one with the ultimate creator, that the idea of racism can have no basis and no validity, not in spiritual terms. And yet we are physical beings 
and racism does exist in the world we live in, and we are products of that world. The Christian pastor Ezra Beyer, in his May 8 uh, blog post responding to the shooting of Amord Arbery, discusses three ways he sees uh, racism, sh racism showing up in the world. And one way is intentional racism. That's when a person simply believes they are superior to another based on race. The second way racism shows up he calls self-serving racism, uh, where one may be aware that something like a statement or a hiring practice or a joke is racist, yet uh, they refrain from speaking up, addressing the racism because they don't want to make waves or rock the boat or damage a friendship or upset a family member. The third way of racism is born of ignorance. That is racism that is perpetuated without the person being aware of it. For example, because we uh, it, it operates in us like a hidden belief. That's why we're unaware of it. And sometimes that's inherited. And sometimes that's learned from the norms of society that we grow up in. Now, this kind of racism can show up when a person believes that they are not racist because, for example, they don't see color. They see everyone as the same. Now, I have been made to understand that when I say I do not see a person's color, it means I also cannot see the issues they, fe they face in our society because of their color. I may, up, I may end up denying, or even worse, not seeing the genuine struggle that person deals with, and that stops me from being their ally. Now, the racism here is subtle, but likely just as damaging because it denies the experience of the person being discriminated against. The solution is ironic because uh, to see the oneness in others and to embrace our essential spiritual connection with them, we must acknowledge our differences and sincerely seek to understand how they play out experientially in our society. Let us go back again to our teaching. There is a power in the universe, and we may all use it. It is a divine spark in all of us. It is the essence we all share with each other. Indeed, it's the one thing we have in common. Again, ironically, the more we observe and honor the differences in others, the more the divine spark is revealed, the one that we have in common. An important practice, then, in spiritually addressing racism is to acknowledge our physical, racial differences, honor them. It is not a spiritual error to see individuality and differences, when at the heart of the seeing, we keep in our mind our true oneness. Now, why this is so vital to me, especially in our monochromatic community, is because it is a step toward accepting that we do not truly understand what it is like to be of a different color. I have been introduced to actions I can begin taking to uh, further expand my awareness of racism in the world and how I can respond to it. And the first is to include people who are directly affected by racism, people of color, in conversations about racism. And not because it's polite or kind to do so, but because without their voice, we cannot understand, for example, what is the experience of Asian Americans during this pandemic? Talking to people of your same race may be a place to start, but the converse, conversation will expand into actual effectiveness if people of color are included. Now, how will you do that if you live in a predominantly monochromatic community like ours is? 
Well, we have to be dutifully creative and committed to finding ways to be opened up. There is always a way. For example, consider PBS's recent article, 10 Black Authors Everyone Should Read. You see, you and I can bring into our thinking the experiences, the history, the points of view, and the struggles from beyond our close circle of friends so that we include the experiences and struggles and points of view of those most affected by racism, to bring it into our consciousness. And then in this way, through our honoring of differences, we can become more and more sensitive to the reality that people with different skin colors have different experiences of life, even while we are essentially one in spirit. At Centers for Spiritual Living, we are motivated by a vision of a healthy, loving world, a world that works for all. So it is no surprise then that racial inequity would be disturbing to us. I'd like to talk about what happens to us when we have a vision, like for example, a vision of a world that works for all, and then we ignore the strong inner urges it produces in us beckoning us forward to following, follow it. It becomes then an unexpressed aspiration and it begins to disturb us. I want to tell you about an African-American man born after the Civil War, moved from Missouri in search of a greater opportunity and freedom and settled in New York City in Harlem. Now, in the early 1900s, Harlem was experiencing a great cultural explosion, especially for African-American poets and artists and playwrights. The period would later be called Harlem Renaissance. The man I'm talking about, Langston Hughes, was a leader in that cultural explosion, and he wrote a poem titled Dream Deferred, that comments on our topic today. Now the language is a bit strong, but the point is so valuable. He writes, what happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or does it fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat? Or crust and sugar over? like syrupy sweet. Maybe it just sags like heavy load. Or does it explode? Ah, this poem speaks to me about visions and dreams and what happens to us when we don't give them safe passage into expression. Langston Hughes uh, lived in a time when it was challenging for an African American to have a dream, much less to follow it. And he asks us the question in the poem, what happens to a dream or vision when we delay it? Does it explode? Today we are witnessing a building up of pressure, the pressure that happens when we put the call to live as one human family on hold. Maybe it's been the same for you with your personal dreams. Maybe you are already familiar with the inevitable explosion that starts to build up one way or the other when you and I do not do what is right with our souls. The thing about a vision, such as a world that works for all, is that it describes a reality that isn't here yet. It's beyond what we have now. It calls us to something larger than what we have now. That's the point of vision. Visions must be bigger than where we are right now. Vision doesn't need to take into account whether or not we are ready for it. A vision describes a new identity. And once we say yes to that, to what our hearts know is right, the vision will come back to us over and over again until we either find the time or the courage to follow it, to welcome it, and to actualize it. Or we live our lives haunted by it, 
becoming more and more frustrated as it festers within, wondering how life could have been or would have been if only we had dared to follow the prompting of our hearts. What happens for me is this, you know, if I don't listen to what my heart knows, if I refuse, for example, to educate myself outside of my norm, if I do not speak up for oneness, for whatever reason, whether that be fear of making waves, unwillingness to look at my inherited societal beliefs, or just plain procrastination, then what happens is that the longer I wait, the louder it gets in me, and the louder it gets, the more disturbing it is to my peace. The futurist Barbara Marx Hubbard wrote in her book, Conscious Evolution, we are in the midst of a massive upwelling of human potential and creativity and anger and frustration. We are confused and reactionary, yet bursting with new capacities like a newborn child. That's the way it feels to me right now, not just in me, but in the world. That we're going to burst if we don't let out what is inside. I see it everywhere. I see also that it is already in progress. We are redefining everything. What is relationship? What is valuable? What is important? What is ethical business? What is racial equity? What role does religion play? What is a just government? Everywhere. We are already responding to this intense inner urge and prompting. The calling of our global heart will not be deferred or delayed. And it won't be quiet until it works for all. And I have to remind myself not to be hypnotized by the backlash of control and violence and fanaticism that happens when we are at the threshold of a breakthrough. I remind myself that it seems to be the case sometimes that when we do answer the call to a greater way of being together, that which wishes to stay the same acts up. And resists. It happens in me and it happens in the world. I try to remind myself that it is exactly for these moments that we are here to birth in ourselves and in our culture the something greater that wishes to be the sovereignty of heaven on earth. And just as surely as something calls us individually to a greater life, something is calling us collectively too. And if as a society we keep on just keeping on accepting, avoiding, allowing, rationalizing, putting the vision of a world that works for all on hold, the more we feel the pressure of it wanting to bust out all over. You may have already had personal experience of that kind of dissatisfaction in your life when you've looked into it and thought, there's got to be something better than this. There has to be a better way for me to live a more connected, compassionate life. So what do you do? Perhaps this. Listen to your heart. Get really still and ask it in that place from which the divine love speaks. Ask it humbly for clarity and for understanding and for revelation and for direction, especially in how to understand racism in our world in a spiritual context. Today, for our closing prayer, I bring you a spiritual mind treatment written by practitioner Tracy Brown, who many of you will remember from when she visited our community here in Santa Rosa. It is titled, Wherever I Am, There Too Is God. I invite you to breathe in and to exhale, letting your eyes close. 
God, Spirit, Universe, Love, Allah, the All, the One, Life. By whatever name or title, it is infinite intelligence creating life. It creates the moon and the stars. It creates the grass and the sand. It creates the dog and the cat. It creates the mountain and the valley. It creates the heat and the cold. It creates the winter and the spring. It creates all life, all species, all forms, including all humanity. My life is the life of God expressing, expanding, and evolving through all the circumstances of my human experience. Every attribute and quality of God is in me, for I am made from it. I am made of it. I remember now that my true essential nature is the nature of God. And so when I am resisting change, Spirit gently says, But that's what I do. When I feel excluded or judged, I hear Spirit singing in my ear, You are my beloved. When I am exhausted and ready to give up, Spirit instructs me to follow where it leads. When I start believing no one understands, Spirit provides an angel who sees deep into my heart. When I reach the edge of my understanding, Spirit is simply trying to remind me there is more to know. When I find myself triggered by the actions of others, Spirit laughs and asks, How are you triggering them? When I find myself feeling helpless to change a worldly condition, Spirit is whispering, I only need to change myself. When my old stories keep invading new circumstances, Spirit reminds me, new wine can be ruined by old wineskins. When I am convinced I am right, Spirit comes in my dreams and shows me the multitudes in the beloved community. When I am tempted to walk away, Spirit asks, What have I called you here to do? And who have I called you to be now? And when I am acting like it is I and not the Father that doeth the work, Spirit nudges me and reminds me to reverse that equation. When I find myself running full force into the wall of frustration, Spirit suggests I stop and sit on the bench of peace it has provided nearby. I am not here by accident. I am right here in this moment, in this life, in this predicament, in this world for a reason, so I sit in the presence of the Divine and welcome it into my every thought, decision, and action. I choose to hear God's wisdom as I make choices. I bring Spirit's love into every relationship I have. I commit to commune with my higher self daily and allow meditation and treatment and journaling to remind me to identify with the spiritual truth of my being. My human self is a vehicle through which my divine self expresses. Wherever I am, there too is God. I am grateful for this reminder today. I am grateful to know this is the truth every day and for all eternity. I am grateful that my life is the life of God expressing, expanding and evolving through all the circumstances of my human experience. I am grateful for the guidance of spirit that is always present and available. And so I surrender my life 
and this prayer into spiritual law, always present, always available, always working for my good and the good of all life. And I say gently to myself, and so it is. I invite you to let the next breath you take be deeper than the one before, like this. And as you exhale, let your eyes open. As we make the transition to that part of our service in which we practice the law of circulation. I join our treasurer, Bob Hart, in thanking everyone who is able to contribute for doing so. If you would like to make a contribution, you can do so on our website at www.cslsr.org. We're also very grateful for all of the uh, checks that are mailed into our physical address, and especially those that include beautiful notes of gratitude and encouragement and appreciation. Thank you very much. And now, time for our offering. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Filyoon, and it's time for our community announcements. 
Two of our summer classes begin this week. The Creative Process in the Individual with Tom Nielsen begins on Tuesday. And Forgiveness and Revealing the Divine Within with Reverend Sayota Bell. We have a short video today from Reverend Sayota describing the forgiveness class. And long ago, in a paradise we now call Hawaii, there was no formal code of law and no written language to protect the safety of the family and the tribe. Hawaiians used a forgiveness technique, ho'oponopono. Today, around the world, this practice of Hawaiian forgiveness is used as a direct means to experience deep peace and inner freedom. Hawaiian forgiveness helps us to unburden the weight of our past. Ernest Holmes described forgiveness as the way to know the divine within as love. The more inner freedom we can create for ourselves, the greater ability we have to know love, peace, and a greater connection with the divine. So I believe what you will discover in this class will be alive in your heart and make a real difference for you long after our time together is complete. This is a three week enrichment class. There's no book to purchase. I will provide the handouts. I hope you can join me. You can register for Reverend Sayota's class until 9 a.m. this Wednesday, and you have a bit longer to register for Tom's class on the creative process in the individual. But don't procrastinate because we will not be able to accommodate any late registrations for these classes. Today, Dr. Edward invites you to attend a virtual social hall on Zoom. Come and get a virtual hug, connect with new and old friends from 1 to 1.30 today. It'll be fun, nurturing, and connecting. The information is on our website. So that's today, and we're expecting a full house. So Dr. Edward and I are excited to see all of your beautiful faces again. Prayer practitioners are giving free spiritual coaching sessions to our community on Zoom. If you've never had a practitioner coaching session, this is your chance to try it out. You'll be glad you did. Click on the free practitioner sessions on our website. Good morning. One of the best kept secrets here at the center is that prayer practitioners not only provide spiritual mind treatment, they also provide wise counsel. We've been trained, vetted, licensed, and relicensed to do this. The prayer practitioners are offering a spring spiritual renewal event as a gift to the congregation. It'll be held on Zoom on May 29th and 30th. You can sign up at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, or 3 through Reverend Sayota Bell. Just call her at 546-4543, extension 106, and she will register you for a one-on-one, -on -one, completely confidential session. I hope you'll join us there. It truly is a wonderful experience. I'm Kathy Galvin, one of your prayer practitioners. Weekly groups are continuing to meet online. On Tuesday, we have the Science of Mind 12-step group. On Wednesdays, we have Lunchtime Learning hosted by Reverend Tara. Again, on Wednesday, we also have a guided meditation with Reverend Sayota Bell. And on Thursday, we have a time to sit in stillness with Reverend Tara. On Saturday, we have morning meditations. And finally, we have our Sunday evening conversation which is facilitated by the brilliant practitioner, Megan Rooney. The topic is to be and to do that which is mine to be done. Everyone is welcome. Our youth and family program continues to use Zoom. 
For more information and resources for families while sheltering in place, please contact Susan Robinson, the Youth and Family Ministry Director. Did you know that you can get confidential one-on-one affirmative prayer right after service? Because you can. Practitioners have set up a virtual chapel. We call it Virtual Gritten Chapel to remind us of the physical space that we'll all be back in soon enough. The way it works is that you have to log out of this online service and go to the links specifically made for our Virtual Gritten Chapel. Trained prayer practitioners are standing by immediately after every service on Sunday mornings. Thank you so much for being a part of our spiritual community. We and I miss you so much. Take care. May I be filled.